Hello everybody and welcome back to Universe Sandbox 2 and uh, I sent a tweet out on uh, Twitter uh, asking uh, what experiments I should do in Universe Sandbox and uh, I decided I wanted to try and take suggestions from you guys right from the Twitterverse. A few of them caught my eye, uh, one of them uh, from Zombie Wolf here or Twilight Wolf 250, create a solar system that orbits another solar system uh, and I really wish I could just take you know, our entire solar solar system, the entire simulation, and just place a second one right next to it, but I don't, I don't know of any kind of, like, copy and paste. That'd be kind of cool just to, to highlight a box and just paste it right there. And then see what would happen if we suddenly turned our solar system into, like, a duplicate binary system. But we can try and do something a little bit more on a simulated scale. We'll just make, like, we'll just place all the... I'll include Pluto, I'll put all the nine planets uh, orbiting one sun here, and then I'll put another sun, um, let's actually, let's pause the simulation. I'll get a nice binary orbit and we'll make the sun super far out, they're gonna be super far out from each other, and then I'll try and place all the planets in kind of, they'll pretty much just be in a, in a perfectly circular orbit. Uh, so we'll have Mercury right there orbiting that sun, uh, we'll have this Mercury orbiting right here, they're probably totally not accurate but whatever then mars jupiter <laughs> eventually these, are, these may end up starting to overlap but you know what that's okay that's okay if they start overlapping uh it'll just be that much more interesting if it's kind of like a venn diagram of uh, solar systems uranus is going to orbit there uranus is going to orbit on this side beat it up and let's see all the trails okay so that's all those orbits are starting everything's going all according to plan but this sun for some reason Okay, so this sun is going to orbit this sun. So all these orbits are getting skewed here. But I want to see like when we're going to start seeing planets getting flung out. It looks like Saturn is making a trade over to the other sun here. <laughs> oh my god, is Saturn going to actually just crash into the sun? I don't think so. But it is going to influence Mars like crazy. I can't even accurately describe what's going on. There's just so many trails <laughs> happening. <laughs> We don't have much of a solar system anymore. Anyways, let's uh, let's pause the simulation here. A lot has happened. Earth this seems like it's uh, it's pretty close to the sun now. Actually, I'm not really sure. How is Earth doing? Earth is uh, frozen over in this mess. Let's just follow. Let's just follow this Earth and see where it goes. Oh, there we go. Oh, that was cool. Did you see that? It, it got like I guess like pretty close to some of the stars. So it's like sometimes it'll be super bright days and sometimes there will be really dark days and then it'll almost like night will close like it's an eyelid just be just depending on the its relation to uh the two suns <laughs> that's so weird it's like that would be in the forecast it's like today's gonna be extra bright today because you're gonna see two two stars in the sky rather than one or it's gonna be an extra dark day because maybe you're not gonna see or you're gonna see like one and a half or something like that jesus but it seems like it's it's way too far out from either star for uh it to even support liquid water but it does look like it's a relatively circular orbit. It's still orbiting. Whoa, Jesus. That just got influenced by Saturn. Maybe Earth will be okay now? Is Earth going to melt? What's the temperature of Earth? Temperature of Earth is minus 82 degrees Celsius. It's basically like a colder Mars. Earth's climate is actually becoming semi-habitable. Now we just got Earth in an ice age. Really, really close to Venus, by the way. You might actually be able to see Venus with a naked eye, but it's minus 8 degrees Celsius overall and we got extreme ice caps on earth ice age mode and we'll see if it uh as we speed it up if it will get any worse <laughs> oh and then there's the darkness just like appearing out of nowhere it's like when's it gonna get dark woo, 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 woo. <laughs> so confusing it's like i don't know when to go to sleep oh now it's kind of a darker day kind of an eclipsy day and it's kind of frozen over again i guess we got flung out somewhere Meteorologists must hate me. I can't predict the weather. And darkness again. <laughs> this is something that I want to try out right here. Is I, I want to try and do some more of black holes. Surprise, surprise, I want to do more of black holes. What if we have a black hole orbiting a black hole, kind of like that. Amazing. And then let's try and get a black hole orbiting this black hole. <laughs> it's going to turn into like black hole section here. So this, is, so this was a, a black hole of the mass of... 10 million suns, and now they're kind of passing, they're transiting each other, and then let's get a black hole with the mass of 10,000 suns orbiting this black hole. <laughs> but why stop there? And we zoom in on this black hole, zoom, everything is so dark. And then what if we make 
a black hole with the mass of 100 suns orbiting this black hole, and then we zoom in on this black hole, and then we make uh, a black hole the mass of one sun, or one, or is that one million sun? I think it's just the mass of one sun. Okay, and we make that black hole do that. That, that black hole just fly out. It totally just did. Put it at a good distance so it doesn't fly out of the solar system. Okay, so just to, uh, just to be clear, everything is so dark. Where's the Milky Way? Okay, okay, there we go. That's a good visual of it. Black hole of the mass of 10 million suns. Zoom in, we have a black hole of 1 million times the sun. Zoom in, we have a black hole of 100 times, sorry, 10... Thousand times the mass of the sun, then we got a black hole that's the mass of 100 suns, and then we got a black hole that's the mass of the sun. And I could probably make one that's even smaller if we if we include our uh, tiniest black hole that's like a millimeter in diameter. <laughs> but is this stable over time? Unless like there is a glitch. I hope it's oh Jesus Christ, I'm forgetting how many black holes I actually have going on here. <laughs> so far it actually is surviving. I'm just afraid of speeding this up so much that it's like, you know, the, the, the computer, the computer will just end up like making things glitch and things will just fly out of the solar system. And I want to see the, the velocity of just the black hole that's the mass of the sun since it's orbiting really pretty closely to uh, the black hole that's the mass of 100 suns. <laughs> I feel like I'm just getting all caught up in words here. What's the velocity? The velocity is 200,000 kilometers per second. What is the speed of light in terms of kilometers per second? Ooh. So the speed of light is 300,000 kilometers per second, and this is getting to like 200,000 kilometers per second. So that's actually two thirds the speed of light that this black hole is going <laughs> around this particular black hole. And how fast is this black hole going? Even the black hole of 100, the mass of 100 suns is going, uh, at about maybe a quarter of this or maybe about half the speed of light and then this black hole is going at about a quarter maybe a fifth of the speed of light then this black hole is going at a third of the speed of light for some reason this one's going faster and then this one is just going whatever speed it's going oh wait this is 10 million times is that the biggest one we have it is the biggest one we have okay wiggle 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 we cannot process what's going on make earth die in the most awful way Okay, this is from Dragon Dark. So I get to have free reign over this. How would I like to make Earth die? There, there was an idea that popped into my head. Let's just grab the sun. We're, we're, gonna, we're gonna place a snippet of the solar system. So we'll just place the sun. Uh, and then we'll get Earth orbiting. We'll place Earth. <laughs> I can't speak today. We'll place Earth at uh, about a distance of where that's equivalent to one, uh, one year, one Earth year. Orbital period, 365 days. So Earth is exactly where it should be, although that's kind of like an ideal uh, position for the Earth. The Earth actually has a little bit of an eccentricity. It, it, it actually isn't 100% a perfect circle, although it's very close to being a perfect circle. Uh, but we're doing the perfect circle, and then we're going to place a second Earth at about the opposite distance, and I will make sure that it's 100% correct. Orbital period is 300, I'll just type it again just to make sure it, uh, it stays exactly where it should be. Okay, so Earth's orbital period on this side is 365 days. Earth's orbital period on this side is 365 days. So I like to think that they are pretty equidistant apart from the sun. They're on the same plane, I hope. What if we allow enough time to go by? Actually, wait, nothing will happen. Ooh, how about this? How about this? I know exactly what to do. I will negate the velocity of Earth. I will put this Earth in a retrograde orbit, and they will be on in a head-on collision in uh, in the same orbital orbital plane. I don't know what the hell it's called. Okay, so if I put it to negative 29.8 kilometers per second, that'll put it in the opposite direction, I'm hoping. I think it's going the other way. I think it is. So it'll be in the same plane as Earth. Make sure nothing has changed because I need them to collide. It would suck if they just kind of like skirt right past each other. Although that would be kind of cool to look at. Are you guys going to get close and hopefully kill each other? Maybe gravity will kind of do a little bit more of the, the dirty work. I hope. Orbital period is still 365 days for this Earth. Orbital period is 365 days. Okay. Actually, no, they both kind of diverted away. Never mind. All right. I'm going to trust physics that you guys will collide at the exact same point. You will just have a head-on collision. No need for gravity. I don't know why this is the most horrendous way you can kill Earth, but it's a head-on collision. It's like a planet crash. 
I feel like it's, a, it's the highest velocity that you can possibly get. <laughs> and it's just like a... The best, the, the best free fall scenario. I just want to make sure I'm watch- I want to wa make sure I'm watching this in slow motion, so I'll just keep gradually slowing it down. Oh, the poor earthlings. And let me just make sure, they are 100% habitable. They are in the ideal place, although the ice caps are kind of- are kind of weak. Maybe- maybe this is a realistic earth scenario. One hour per second. Oh my god, these earths are really just approaching each other fast. Okay, and getting closer, getting closer, slow it down even more. Oh, they're totally in view! Oh, I like this, I like this. This is this is me being surprised at like, oh, huh, this actually did work. I didn't even have to adjust the orbit or anything. They just are going to have a full-on collision with each other. Well, let's make sure, let's actually see if it's perfect and it's not going to be like, oh, they just clipped each other or something. It'd be kind of scary if... You know, you're just living your everyday life and suddenly you just see a duplicate Earth appear in the sky. It's like, that's not the moon! That's me! I can see my house! And then you're on this Earth over here and you're also looking at your Earth counterpart. Let me go over here. And you're like, huh! Something tells me that this isn't right! It's like two, uh, it's like the multiverse theory. Suddenly you got two universes colliding. <laughs> there we go, that's the way you call it. It's like, when universes collide, this isn't supposed to happen. This is weird fifth dimensional stuff or sixth dimensional stuff i don't know what's the the equivalent of this is tenth dimensional stuff or something i've reached the tenth dimension and this is these uh the particular dimension where earth is for some reason in a retrograde orbit because by multiverse theory th this technically should exist why does it feel like they're actually going to skirt past each other are you kidding me <laughs> no come on 365 days is supposed to be your orbital period, excuse me, Earth. Maybe they will influence each other. Seems like maybe one of them, uh, they're, they're just kind of swerving past each other. It's like, oh, who's going to play chicken? Who's going to play chicken? Whoop! Nope. I kind of want to negate the velocity of this one. Hold on here. Uh, velocity, minus 29 meters per second. Kilometers per second, I mean. Ha! -ha! Minus 29.9 kilometers per second. Aha! You're just going slightly, slightly faster. Seems like it's getting further out. No, stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Are they, do they even have any influence over each other? That's so weird. Okay, so. How can we get these two just to, just to orbit each other? Just kind of, just right next to each other. They're just orbiting the sun. And maybe Earth's or rotational period around Earth would be like the equivalent to like how long it takes for the Earth to orbit the sun, so it just kind of looks like it's fixed in the sky. It'd be kind of interesting, but I don't think uh, I could possibly get that to work. Oh no, I made them orbiting each other now! God damn it! Close it. Close the gap. Close the gap. Oh, I broke everything. And then suddenly Earth will get pulled into the Roche limit. I wonder if they would be in the Roche limit if they were this close by. That's kind of scary. Oh. Um. Huh. Something happened. Will this be able to survive? All the planets without the sun are they making a trade? They appear to be making a trade. Er, Saturn was unhappy with Neptune, and now Neptune is on Team Jupiter. Although now Neptune seems to just be independent. Neptune is a great person.